Welcome to No Rares Required, episode 38, Demir Tempt Control. Similar to Is It, the blue-red spell-heavy archetype I covered last week, Demir or blue-black also tends to be a spell-heavy archetype. And instead of cycling into a large Gandalf sanction or frying them with fiery inscription, you aim to create a large army off of the mouth of Sauron. Especially in comparison to Is It, it aims to win through controlling your opponent as you get to a level 4 ring emblem, and it leans a little bit more heavily on creatures, which means you are more prone to interruption from your opponent's removal. But you also can wall up against your opponent's early aggression with cards like Dunlin Crubane. It's hard to say which is a better deck, Is It or Demir. You're giving up the aggression and direct damage of Red to gain the amazing control options of Claim the Precious and Torment of Golem. As with most control or attrition decks, it will come down to playstyle and how well you are able to mitigate your opponent's threats. Cards like Glorious Gale get harder to play um, if your opponent is wise enough about the set to play around it. So at the top level of play, I think Izzet wins out just slightly because Demir is easier to interrupt. But the mono blue player in me likes to watch my opponent wither away instead of get beat down. And because of how deep black is as a color, it can be easier to land in Demir than in Izzet. It is also a decent place to pivot if you start out going for Rakdos or black red, but red isn't flowing, so you pivot into blue. We're on the beginning of week 5 since the release of Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-earth, and the meta has evolved quite nicely, and I imagine there might be one more shift as people start to figure out the power of blue. We will see. But back to Demir, the archetype is labeled as a mass control, but I think it should have been tempt control since the ring temptation mechanic ended up being so much more powerful than the amass mechanic. I aim to have a minimum of 7 ring tempt triggers, the draft skeleton above has over 10, and since a level 4 ring emblem can make even a 1-1 into a lethal threat, and the level 2 ring emblem, uh, the looting mechanic, has proven to be incredibly helpful in finding your threats. A little bit of a mass synergies do allow you to play spells that also create a creature on the board uh, that then can be a lethal ring bearer, and I've trophied with a deck running as low as 7 creature spells, so don't worry if you end up on the low end. Just make sure that you have some turn 1 and turn 2 plays to gum up the board before you go into full control mode, mode and lock down your opponent's threats. Now let's dive into the cards individually and discuss some alternate cards and alternative strategies available for Demir. There's no mythic level common for this archetype, but at tier 1 we have Claim the Precious. I'm often in the position of having to make a choice of whether to pick this or Dunlin Crobane, and I think Claim wins out even in a mass-heavy archetypes like Rakdos, but it is close. In Demir, I think the clear winner is Claim the Precious, removal that also advances the Ring Emblem, absolutely great. Almost pack one, pick one level, but I do think there are a couple of bombs that I'd rather take over it, but not many. First up at Tier 2, uh, where I'm happy to play multiple copies, but probably won't take it pack one, pick one, is Glorious Gale. I've been very impressed with this card, especially if you can line it up to counter their turn 4 play. Essence Scatter, but if the creature is legendary, you get a Ring Temptation. And the majority of uncommons and rares in the set are legendary, so I usually count these as half a Ring Tempt, but that is on the conservative side. Your opponent can end up playing around Glorious Gale, whether it be through cards like Torment of Golem, Swarming of Moria, Mortar Muster, Rally at the Hornburg. So keep in mind what your opponent might have before you decide to double Stone Rain yourself for a turn. Against green or white, you're likely to not get burned by keeping the mana open. Against black and red, I'd lean towards tapping out instead. I've really enjoyed the Torment of Golem. Uh, running up to three copies, and I put it at tier two. It's worth noting, though, that the floor, or the worst that the card can do, is pretty bad. If it's late in the game and your opponent doesn't have a hand, then this can be a four cost two two, or even worse, a four cost plus two plus two to your existing army. But you can cast it off of Pelagir Survivor as early as turn three, snag their best card, anticipate their future turns to figure out when you should keep Glorious Gale up, and create a 2-2. So low floor, but high ceiling. 
And as long as you have enough ring temptation, you can always loot it away if your opponent's hand is empty. My last tier 2 common is Dunlin Crabane. A 3-3 over two bodies, one of which has flying. It's a slightly worse version of Preening Champion from March of the Machine. I've been teased for passing these on pack 1 pick 1. Don't get me wrong, I think it's a great card and I'll happily take multiple copies. I just don't like it as a pack 1 pick 1, but you do you, boo. Now for tier 3, and this is where more decision making takes place. Birthday Escape is great. One blue mana, draw a card, trigger a ring temptation. If you don't have the Mouth of Sauron to get the payoff from having multiple spells in your graveyard early, and you don't have uh, the seven or more ring temptation triggers, then this card goes way down in value. This is quickly becoming a high sought after common, especially because of how good it is in blue red spells. Just make sure that you have the payoffs if you pick this up in pack 3. Soothing of Smeagol, I also put it tier 3. It works quite well if some must answer bomb slipped through while you were tapped out and you have Glorious Gale in hand. If you bounce a legendary, it can even line up to effectively give you two ring temptations. If you don't have Glorious Gale or ring temptation synergies, then this is just a two cost bounce and not fantastic. Pelliger Survivor, I put it tier 3, but I was half tempted to put it at tier 1. This one goes up in value the more 4 cost and above spells you have in your deck. If you have Torment of Golem, I go way up on this. It's a good ring bearer and a good blocker for your opponent's early plays and other ring bearers. It's a win, a win condition in a pinch, though I have only seen the mill happen a handful of times, and it allows you to play broken off-color spells like Fearfire Foes. There are definitely some Demir decks that need this card to function. If that's the case, then grab as many survivors as you can. I've been happy to have them even if they are just helping me cast the double pip on claim, but if you find yourself with less spells and more creatures kind of doing the amass synergies like Dunling Crabane, Gothmog, then this goes down. I also put She Loves Ambush at tier 3. There are two things to keep in mind with this card. How much interaction do you already have? And how likely are you to have a creature that will trade well? Cards like Survivor can block up to 5 damage before they die. Berserker or a 2-2 two -two amass token can only block 4. If you're playing this to trade 1 for 1 and get a food token, it's great. If you're 2 for 1-ing, then not so much. Also, you have uh, if you have an empty board, then this just becomes a 3-cost healing salve that only works if your opponent also has a creature that you can target. So, pretty bad floor. My last tier 3 common is Urukai Berserker. Like its red counterpart, Relentless Rohirrim, it's great if you have 7 ring temptation, but pretty awful if you find yourself short on ring temptations. Now for the uncommons. Demir gets 3 mythic level uncommons. First up is Saruman's Trickery. The sets cancel the counterspell for 1 double pip blue. Most sets have them, and they tend to be just okay or even mediocre. But Saruman's Trickery gives you a 1-1, and this is huge. Canceling your opponent's turn, but also creating a 1-1, puts you ahead on the board. And in this set, as long as you have ways to get to the 4th level ring emblem, that 1-1 can be a lethal threat. This is the sort of card that I look to snag, pack 1, pick 1, and I recommend you do the same. It's hard to say if Nazgul's best deck is Rakdos or Demir. Either way, it's a stacked card. I put it at tier S. I'll happily pack one, pick one Nazgul, and the more tempt that I can pair with it, the better. There's one decision that you commonly have to make when you play this card, and that's do you put the ring emblem on a creature that can immediately attack and trigger a loot, or do you put it on your Nazgul? If you have another ring temptation in your hand, then I think you should go for the immediate loot. Without it though, I see far too many people put the ring on another creature. If you keep the ring on Nazgul, it has to be traded 2 for 1 outside of removal because of the ring's skulk function. Just something to keep in mind, if your ring bearer is going to be blocked by your opponent playing a 1-3 the following turn, you'd much rather have the multiple loots than the immediate one unless you suspect your opponent has removal for your Nazgul. And my last tier S mythic level uncommon for Demir is Fearfire Foes. And it's a fantastic reason to have 3 plus survivors that let you cast off-color spells. 
the archetype doesn't splash considerably well outside of Survivor, so it can take a bit of effort to make it work, but this card is insane and worth playing if you can. At tier 1, we have Voracious Fell Beast. With more people playing blue, I decided to knock this down to tier 1 from tier S in every black archetype, except for Rakdos. It feels so bad if they cast Glorious Gale on this bad boy, but at least it has a good enter the battlefield effect, so it's not a great target for bounce like Horses of Brunin or Soothing of Smeagol. It's a great top end card, but at 6 mana, you want to make sure that you're running 17 lands. One of the ways I see people mess up perfectly great decks in this format is cutting too many lands. Loot effects, like the second level of the ring, means you want more lands in your deck, not less. It is a little less um, matchup dependent as well, since a 4-4 flyer for 6 is only great if you get a sacrifice and a food token. Um, I'm not too upset though if the, this only snags even just a 1-1 token, since they can be problems if your opponent has enough tempt. I'll start tier 2 off with Horses of the Brunin. This along with Torment of Golem is a good reason to seek out Survivor as well. There are some board states where my only answer is to top deck Horses of the Brunin. There are also board states where Horses of the Brunin, similar to Soothing of Smeagol, is sad to have. Especially if the cards have good into the battlefield effects, then this can just feel downright bad. I also put this at tier 3 um, for that very reason. But the majority of times that I've played it, I've been happy to have it. And if you can bounce a big army, you'll feel like a rock star. Next up at tier 2 is the Bath Song. Just like Is It, this is great at filtering uh, to your threats while also potentially filling your graveyard with spells. You don't have as many payoffs as Is It, but if you don't have the Mouth of Sauron, then you want spells in your graveyard. It's worth noting that if you get two copies, you can loop these to have an infinite library. If you end up in a very controlling matchup, it can matter. Just be sure to start the loop while you have at least six cards left. I also really like the Gold Berry in Demir, the 1-3 Nymph for 2 at rare that can move counters around, which can extend the chapters of the saga since they are lore counters. While the combo isn't strictly limited to Demir, since both cards are blue, the plus 1 plus 1 counters from amass tokens also can be quite useful to move around. Just something to keep an eye out for if it happens to be an option, since Goldberry is a card that I and others usually pass. Next up at tier 2 we have Golem's Bite. This card is nice for surviving to the late game. The ideal target is a 3-2 like Berserker or Errand Rider, and sometimes the instant speed lets you get a 2 for 1 when they go to play cards like Shelob's Ambush on their 1-1. One -one. Then later you can exile it for 4 to get a Ring Temptation. Bitter Downfall is also excellent black removal. I put it at tier 2. The two, da 2 damage has been relevant in many games, and it's always nice to have a spot removal for whatever slipped through your counter spells and bounce. Along with Claim, keep in mind how many absolute removal spells you have in your list, and choose your targets wisely. There aren't many first strike options or cards like Battle Scarred Goblin that damage when blocked to combo with this, but I still want as many as I can grab in Demir. My last tier 2 on common is the Mouth of Sauron. This can be a huge turn 5, amassing a 4-4 or 5-5 army as well as being a 3-4 itself. Count the number of instances and sorceries that are in each player's graveyard and choose the player that has the highest number. You're most likely going to mill lands. Um, if it is a tie, don't be afraid to mill yourself. You are playing an above average number of spells for that very reason. And this is also a reason to increase the value of Sam's Desperate Rescue, which I usually put at good filler. It's the, uh, the raised dead with ring tempt. Since bringing back the Mouth of Sar Sauron and amassing all over again can be too much for your opponent to handle. And now for Tier 3. Gandalf, Friend of the Shire, is usually a filler uncommon, but Demir is its best archetype. 
Its value goes up the more counter spells you have, since if they play around your glorious scale with a card like Swarming of Moria, it's nice to be able to still do something with the mana. It also performs quite well if you have multiple Ring Temptation triggers, and unlike Izzet, you tend to have more creatures on the board that uh, make each Ring Temptation into a card draw. If you don't have both the Ring Temptations and, and the counter spells, then this card hasn't been very impressive. Just good filler. Gothmog, Morgul Lieutenant, I also put at tier 3. Demir is its worst archetype. You'd much rather be giving Death Touch to your 1 1 human tokens off of Rally at the Hornburg in red or Protector of Gondor in white, or even using the Death Touch to improve your fight or bite spells in Golgari. In Demir, uh, I tend to have a few slots open for creatures, but a 4-4 across two bodies, one of which has Death Touch, can be a great defensive card, especially if you don't already have an army in play. So I put it a tier above filler. Golem, Patient Plotter, I also put it tier 3. You really want enough Ring Temptations to make this worth it, especially since you aren't looking to pressure your opponent early in this archetype. It also works better the more 1 1 token fodder that you have to sack. So I prefer it in Rakdos and Orsov for the same reasons as Gothmog. But a 3 1 that advances the Ring Emblem is great, especially with Haunt of the Dead Marshes, which you can sack and bring back. I also really like Golem with Mineldor, the 3 3 flyer for 4 at Uncommon that blinks a creature when it damages an opponent, since it triggers a Ring Tempt each time that you blink Golem. And my last tier 3 uncommon is Shadow Summoning. Reserved for the Demir decks with 3 plus survivors, this is another off color spell that is worth splashing if you're into that sort of thing. Flying 1 1 Ring Bears are a way to close out the game, and after you have controlled your opponent to the point that they just want to concede, you do need something to actually be a win condition. I don't think it is worth going out of your way to include planes or wizard rockets, but with survivors the splash can be free, and that's when I'll splash Shadow Summoning. Now for the rares, and there is but one that caught my attention, specifically for Demir. Orcish Bowmasters, Horn of Gondor, and Farmer Prince of Athelion are all great, and you should play them if you open them, but Rangers of Athelion gets the spotlight. Demir is its best archetype, in my opinion. Still a busted bomb rare in any archetype, but Demir is a little bit more creature-centric than its other spell-heavy counterpart, Is It, and Rangers is a little off-theme in the Simic Scry deck and Azorius Draw 2. It triggers a Ring Tempt as long as the target is still there when the ability resolves, which is worth noting. Just a reminder that if the Ring Temptation wins you the game, you might want to submit zero and mind control nothing to ensure the Ring Trigger. And lastly, the Vigilance works nicely in an archetype that is playing a very defensive strategy. And now for the Mythics, and there is also but one that caught my attention specifically for Demir. Anduril, Flame of the Re West, Palantir of Orthanc and Sauron, the Dark Lord, are all great and should be played if you open them, but like Rangers, I think Witch King of Ongmar is best in Demir. You have ample time to stall until you hit 5 mana, or filter through your deck to find your busted bomb, and the few threats that, that might have made their way through your control end up just getting sacrificed when they deal combat damage to you, and it triggers a Ring Temptation, and you also have the card draw from blue to keep your hand full of discard fodder so that Witch King always has indestructible. That's it for my thoughts on Demir. I hope you found this information helpful, and if you did, remember to hit like and subscribe for more No Rares Required content. We have six weeks left until the next set, Wilds of Eldraine, comes to Arena September 5th, and five more archetypes to cover. If there is a specific archetype that you'd like me to cover next, let me know in the comments below. Happy trophy hunting, and I'll see you all next week.